today. I am Susan with the Portland Workforce Alliance. We are a nonprofit that believes in helping students find their career passions and learn out about all the incredible jobs and companies that are right here in this region. Um, this spring, like the whole world, we've gone virtual. So with us today, we have some amazing and creative people from Wyman Kennedy, which is one of the world's top advertising agencies located right here in Portland. Um, they're going to share with us about their work and their career paths, and then they will answer your questions. We've gotten some great questions already from some of you via email, and you're welcome to ask questions at any time using the chat. Um, a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. Uh, this is being recorded, just FYI. Um, second, just take a minute and log your attendance in the link in the chat, if you would. It's just great to know who is with us today. Um, for participants, your video and audio are muted, no offense, it's for your student privacy. Um, again, if you have a question, ask it in the chat. This is a great place to ask questions. Um, at the end, we'll have a really short feedback link if you can share what you liked and what you'd like to see more of this spring, this summer, this fall. And with that, I will turn it over to Lucy from Weidman Kennedy. Uh, Lucy, go ahead. Hi, everybody. We're so happy to be with you here virtually today. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to be asking our panelists a couple of warm-up questions to get them going, get them ready for your questions. So to start, um, could our panelists uh, take a minute, just a minute, to introduce yourselves, tell us what your job title is and what that job entails at Wyden Kennedy. So, Crystal, do you want to start? Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. This is really exciting. I'm happy to be talking to you guys. Uh, I am a brand manager um, on Old Spice, and uh, my job, uh, I like to describe my job as, like, the quarterback of the football team. Like, I'm not, like, making all of the, all of the you know, touchdowns, but uh, I do help sort of guide and direct the plays, I guess you could say. Um, so uh, I essentially work with the marketing managers on the client side, um, to help them create campaigns. I help pull everyone together uh, so that campaigns can go off seamlessly. So I'm sort of like the project manager, client relationship person. Awesome, that's perfect. Eunice? Hi everyone, nice to meet you. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, my name is Eunice. I work as a producer at Widen. Um, kind of going off the analogy, Crystal said, I'm kind of like the captain of the football team. So in production, we work closely with our internal team. So we have our creatives, our account team, um, but I also help manage uh, expectations and tasks between who we hire as a production company and as a director who ultimately works with us to kind of bring together the, the spot and the work that you see widen come out with. I'm loving this football analogy. Never <laughs> Keep it in short. <laughs> Perfect. Anthony. Yeah. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Anthony Williams here. Um, again, thanks for having me as well. And thanks to Lucy and Kristen, the entire uh, Portland Workforce Alliance team, allowing us to be able to participate. Um, I'm going to switch it up. If they're like football and brand executive, I'm kind of like the point guard, I guess you could say. But it's very similar to um, uh, Crystal. We're um, kind of the ones who are the liaison between the agency and the client being as a brand executive you really kind of a project manager handling all things internal and external so that's great and last we have katie katie are you able to yeah hi okay <laughs> yeah okay. Speaking of technical difficulties um <laughs> yeah yeah, I don't have a good analogy for what I do, but um, I am a strategist. I've been working at Widen for a year and a half, and I would say that basically my job is to take a business problem, like on the case of Old Spice, which I work on with Crystal, it would be like, oh, we're not selling enough deodorant. And then I have to come up with a way to make that interesting um, and, and fruitful for a creative team to work off of. Um, and hey, Oh no. Strategists okay. don't have a great internet connection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Work up to that. <laughs> we'll see if Katie comes back. Um, in the meantime, thank you all. Great introduction. So we have two brand people with us, producer and a strategist today. And I would love to hear from each of you now 
just two to three minutes about how you got into advertising. How'd you find out about advertising and, and what got you into your role now? So, um, uh, Anthony, do you want to start? Yeah, sure thing, sure thing. Um, kind of with me, um, I graduated from Northern Illinois University. Those who are familiar with it in 2017 and actually knew a couple of people who were at Wyden. Um, luckily, I was part of a different internship programs and whatnot. And uh, because of those connections, I was able to meet a couple of people at Wyden who were working in HR and um, kind of, I guess one little piece of advice I recommend to you guys is it's all about who you know, being in contact with everyone. Um, one of the things that kind of got me started was because it was good to know people within the industry. I was always emailing them saying, hey, I'm graduating. I'm graduating soon. You know, looking for an opportunity within this space, um, things of that nature. And it was awesome to be able to, they were, Wyden Kenny was having an internship program. And then at residency summer program, I was able to apply and be a part of it. And um, that's how I got here at Wyden. That's awesome. Katie, are you back? Do you want to? Yeah. I mean, hopefully. You guys tell me. <laughs> uh, you're I, yeah, you're back. I was a computer science major in college, and then I uh, didn't like the math of it, and so I switched to theater. And I feel like, I mean, like, when it comes to, like, high school especially, I'm like, I had no clue that I was going to go to advertising. I wrote on Reddit once on a for hire subreddit asking for an internship and some SEO guy at a local agency just happened to reach out. And this was pre Mad Men. So I didn't even know it was like a cool career. Um, and I just kind of fluctuated between jobs within advertising until I ended up where I am. That's great. Um, and I saw in the chat that Susan uh, put out a call for questions. I just wanted to, let everyone know please send your questions as you go i have my eye on that so if any of the panelists say anything that you want to ask a question about feel free to put that in the chat and we will get to it um Eunice, how did you get into advertising and production yeah um so i am from walnut california which is a small city in southern california i actually went to school in new york at syracuse university um Knew I wanted to study something in communications, didn't really know what exactly, as you know, communications is such a large field. Um, but in high school, I actually was editor in chief for my school's yearbook. So I knew I wanted to do something that entailed sharing stories, taking photos, designing. And so when I got to school, I didn't know advertising was a major uh, that the school offered. And I found myself really liking that. And I took courses from um, videography, art design, um, concepting, and then ultimately I got to widen through a program called um, Most Promising Multicultural Student, which is where um, I was hired as a resident with, with Anthony in 2018. Um, then I, I kind of just started my journey in production after I realized I really love working with um, more of the executional side of advertising as opposed to the concepting and yeah, it's been it's been a year and a half, almost two years now, and it's been great here. Perfect. I see a couple questions, so I'll follow up with those. But Crystal, how did you get into advertising? Yeah, um, like Katie, I didn't know that advertising was really a career path when I was in high school. Um, I grew up in California in a small town called Stockton, California, if any of you guys are familiar. Um, I knew that I wanted to get into communications like Eunice. So I, when I got to college, I studied um, public relations. And um, during that study, I was like, oh, I would love to do something that is um, creatively based or at least be connected to creative. So I took, we did have an advertising program, but I still really didn't know what that meant. So I took one advertising class and was extremely bored um, because it was like intro to advertising and they were talking about just like the history and then we talked about law and I was like, what is this? I don't want to do this. So I stopped taking advertising classes and uh, continued on with PR. Then I got into PR and I worked in PR for several years. And then the thought of getting into advertising um, kind of kept coming up. I think it was probably around the time that Mad Men came out. And I realized that there were, there were a lot of different types of roles in an advertising agency um, that I could be good at. So I can't draw and, you know, I, I think I can write okay, but I'm not a copywriter. 
Um, so I was like, well, what, what can I do that will transfer my skills over? And that's how I landed on account management. Um, but during the time that I thought about making a career change, it was not, it was 2008. So it was the, you know, the great recession, there were no jobs. Um, and more so then than it is now, you really had to know someone in order to get in. And I didn't know anyone in the field. Um, so I sort of took the route of going to graduate school. Now I'll say you do not have to get a graduate degree. Most people don't have graduate degrees in this field. Um, but I decided to do that because um, it was just a personal goal of mine. I went to grad school, studied advertising. From there, I was able to get internships. And then from there, it kind of kick-started my career. Um, but it was a little difficult back then. I remember hearing stories of people going all of these crazy lengths in order to get a job. You know, they would create like video resumes of themselves. They would design outrageous packages and mail them out to every agency that they wanted to work at. Like I remember like some guy created his own website and a blog and a challenge in order to get an advertising. And it was really hard. And I, I think that you guys have the advantage now that there's so many more programs and steps, like there's more internships. Like the fact that this is happening now, I think is incredible because that wasn't available to me, or at least I didn't know about it when I was younger. Um, so it is, I, I feel like an easier step to get in, um, you know, although it's not super easy to get into advertising, but it's definitely doable. Um, I see that there's a question of how difficult it is to find a job. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things that I'll say, like, there are a ton, there are so many advertising type jobs out there. My first job in advertising was in Sacramento, California at a small agency. And I had no idea that Sacramento even had agencies. So, you know, I think that Wyden, Wyden and Kennedy is, in, you know, it's incredible. We have amazing clients and it's, you know, big and well known. But there are also a lot of smaller agencies that could be a nice first step to just start to build your skills up so that it can then be maybe an easier transition to go um, to get into Wyden. So I, I say all that to say that there's several different paths. And I think as you've heard from the four of us, we've all taken different paths um, to get here. So I wouldn't be discouraged um, if, this, if you know that this is what you wanna do. That's a great point. Um, and I also like that you touched on there's not only different paths to get into advertising, but also a lot of different roles, which we're trying to show with our panelists here. And as Crystal mentioned, I'm on the public relations team. There are brand executives, producers, copy creative. So there's lots of different roles within advertising itself um, to pursue. So you kind of touched on Kaylee's question about how difficult it is to find a job in advertising. And I wanted to maybe touch on some of these other student questions. Um, so Eunice, can you tell us, uh, I think it looks like Day asked, what does a day in your life as a producer look like? <laughs> yeah, I was just looking at that one too. Um, that's a great question. I, I've been asked this a couple of times and I don't think I quite have the right answer for it just because my day in the life looks different project by project, but also um, as things are constantly changing, especially right now in the COVID world, um, you can imagine we're not able to really shoot anything um, live action. We can't have crews over 10 people in production. And so a lot of the ideas that our creatives are coming up with um, as a producer, we're working closely to find a little bit more interesting creative solves to not compromise the work, but also make sure we're being able to produce um, the best work we can for the clients. So currently my day in my life, uh, I spend most of my time Right now, I'm currently on a, a job for one of our clients that requires us to shoot in July, but there's not going to be any agency people or clients on set, which is completely, um, it's something that we're all having to adjust to. But what's interesting is that as things are slowly progressing, um, the technology is great in 2020, and we're figuring out ways to actually be able to see the set. We have camera feeds coming from different angles on production and we're able to go into Zoom and see exactly where the director is placing um, the set or where the what the actor is going to be doing on set. And so uh, right now it's kind of figuring out the logistics parts uh, while I'm prepping a job um, that's supposed to shoot in July in Australia. 
<laughs> which is exciting. Um, but I, I think that's kind of what my favorite, I see another question, favorite part about your job. Um, I think for me is that we have such very, very talented and creative minds at Widen and our team comes up with the craziest stuff. And part of my job is figuring out how to do that with the timeline and the budget that we have, um, but never compromise the work and how um, the standards that Widen kind of puts up to ourselves to make the best work we can. Great. Thanks for answering going into your favorite part too. And talking a little bit about how your job has changed. It's super <laughs> interesting to you. We're all kind of adapting as much as possible. Um, so let's, on that note, because we you know, we don't have unlimited time here. Um, I wanted to kind of shift to talk about kind of your job before the pandemic and talking about your job after the pandemic and how it's changed. And maybe we can even incorporate some questions into that answer. Um, so Anthony, I see a question from Axel here. Can you talk about working from home? What did a day in your life look like before and after? Um, and some of your favorite parts of being a brand executive? Yeah, for sure. Great questions, guys. I'm seeing them all coming in as well. I think um, one thing I always said, there's no typical day in the life, especially not from like a brand perspective. Like every day is something different. Um, new challenges, new people you're communicating with. Obviously you have your core set of like a team, so producers and strategists, creatives, and then naturally your clients. But I don't think, um, I, one joke I always give myself is like, there's never a dull day at Widening Kennedy. And I'm sure that can go across the board with any ad agency or any client. Um, so before, COVID, pre-COVID era was um, kind of very heavy on production, um, obviously kind of getting briefs underway with clients. For those who may not know, a brief is just when you get a um, kind of like the client objectives and purpose. Let's say if they got a, a project coming down the year or coming in the pipeline and it's something that they want. Obviously, our agency partners, that's where we come in to work on and deliver a piece of creative. And they brief us on it and we concept with our creative team and our strategists to make sure we're really hitting on target. And then obviously presenting the work in hopes that, you know, the clients absolutely love it and we get to do everything that we pitch to them, um, <laughs> ideally. Um, but kind of before COVID was obviously making sure we're working on that, different projects, different briefs, and um, a, lot of, a lot of email communication. So even in this kind of post-COVID world, and as we're kind of in this quarantine or shelter at home, still a lot of emails, still a lot of communicating with different team members. Um, luckily, we have, as Uni said, different tools and technology, um, such as Slack and obviously like Zooms that are able to Sorry, can you hear me? Okay, yeah. Um, different yeah. tools you guys are able to work with to obviously make sure to get things going. But um, I think one of the things I've always loved, especially with this role, is being able to work with so many different teams. And even now that we all understand, you know, it's different, different difficult situations um, given the circumstances being able to make some like really great work, especially now that impacts culture, um, especially working on Nike is pretty <clears throat> awesome. So I can't give away too much um, speaking from the Nike side, but it's still like work that we can do underway and things that we're working on that obviously can, gives me like fuel to keep going, so. Awesome. And then yeah. Katie, I see Katie. So as Anthony mentioned, he works on the Nike team. Um, yep. And Katie works on the Old Spice team, which is another super fun account. And someone, let's see, uh, David asked, what was your favorite project to work on? So I would just love, give us a little bit of an idea what you do as a strategist, um, like your day-to-day -day and how that's changed. And then maybe also mention one of your favorite Old Spice projects to work on. It's such a bummer because the favorite Old Spice project I had to work on, I can't talk about because it's been postponed. So, <laughs> yes, and I worked on it very closely with Crystal. Yes. Um, Something to look forward to. <laughs> cool. um, but I will talk about, like, I, I mean, oh my God, like, Anthony, hey, I'm, I mean, like, day to day is never the same uh, for any of us, I feel, unless you're doing, like, IT, and even then, like, I, I, I don't know, like, I feel like every day is a new, a new struggle and a new opportunity, but I, like, for me, in particular, um, I, like, I see Vivian um, asked, how much traveling do you do? I do a lot of traveling, usually. Uh, I was, I mean, Crystal and I were supposed to be in Russia last month. Um, I, like I, I do a lot of uh, research um, and a, we call them touchdowns where we, we get a feel for 
um, what is what is uh, commercial resonating um, like in in a place like uh, Europe or um, Asia, and and it's so it's so interesting how much we've been relying on technologies like obviously Zoom to to communicate with each other, like we're doing here. Um, but I mean, even research platforms are adapting. I, I and like it, it's so cool too because then the consumer, like the life of the person that we're selling stuff to, is changing. Like I just read that Hinge is incorporating video on their dating app, and and I, I feel like there are all these different touch points and all these different uh, ways of of living that are. Com- completely in flux. I mean, we were just having a conversation of like, if Old Spice is a deodorant scent brand, how do we talk about scent in a new reality where everyone's staying six feet apart? Or how do we talk about scent in a reality in which your first date happens over video chat? Like, it's so different. <laughs> and it's it's really exciting. Um, my, my favorite part of the job is kind of those really tough problems that you have to sit with. And you have to really investigate and you really have to dive deeper on. Um, but it's also, it's also exhausting. And I'm sure, I mean, it's, it's got to be exhausting for you guys too. I can't imagine even navigating like coming out of high school and then like not knowing when things are going to open up, not knowing if I can move into a dorm. Um, so I sympathize. I, it's just been, it's been such an interesting time. Um, and, and I mean, never a dull moment. I guess. (laughs) Yeah, I think just as, yeah. (laughs) So Susan, do you want to take it to some of the questions that were asked previously? I know we've kind of maxed out on our intro questions. Well, Lucy, maybe I will, there's a couple questions that students asked and um, uh, ahead of time that I want to get to, and then maybe you could look at the chat a little bit and make sure that some of those good questions get to the get to the panelists since you know them so well. Does that sound like a good plan? Great. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I know Holland from Franklin High is here and Laya from Sunset. Hi. Um, you had you both had some questions about internships. I know that comes up a lot. Um, so they had asked, you know, do you have them? Uh, how old do you have to be? And if they're for college students, are there things that they could do now to prepare for their future, you know, very soon in the future internship? And any of uh, Anthony, you're you have been an intern and had a great experience there. Would you want to take a shot at that? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think, um, uh, like I mentioned earlier, the Widen and Kennedy uh, summer residency program, like Eunice and I, was obviously a great uh, foundation or footstool to actually get us within the doors of um, Widen and Kennedy to be a full time employee. And uh, the beautiful thing about it is it's not. It's certainly not your average internship. You're not running coffee and you're not uh, stapling papers. I think, uh, I, I know, especially Eunice and I, we were working our uh, butts off. Uh, they really threw us into the fire, got us acclimated with clients. I was on a hosting an entire client meeting my second day. I'm like, dog, I don't even know these people. But hey, it's, um, it's a way of certainly getting you acclimated and getting you, um, I guess, getting your training wheels off. And then... Um, I think the, I know for sure the Wyoming Kennedy Summer Residency Program um, is certainly open to college students. So for those who are certainly interested in it, obviously this year, unfortunately, due to the circumstances, they did have to cancel it to my understanding. But um, there's always next year. Next there's always next still year. On. Uh, is it? She's still on the residency. Yes, we're doing wow, it virtually. So great. Yeah. Oh, great. Oh, great. Okay. We have about five residents um, okay, across great. New York. Portland. So yeah, so awesome. okay, awesome, awesome. Well, we're adapting. Apologies then. Yes, yes. Look at that. We're adapting. Um, okay, cool. Thank you uh, for correcting me, Lucy. I think um, for those who maybe obviously not a part of the program this year are interested in it, certainly stay in contact. You have some industry widening Kennedy people right here. Um, hopefully, we can share like our emails. So you guys can get in contact with us. I think the biggest thing I would do, like in the meantime. Um, it's kind of funny. It's, it's YouTube's like slogan. They call it broad. They, or they, you know, their brand slogan is broadcast yourself. That's like one tip I've always been giving to people. Everything that you do, everything that you're capable of, document it, um, share it, share it on all your different social platforms, share it on LinkedIn, Facebook with friends. Um, if you're a creator, create stuff, you know, share it across the, um, 
different networks and your platforms just because when people see like you're working and you're hungry um and even if you're doing stuff just out of your own passions and creativity there's there is room for you all within throughout this industry it's just a matter of what you're interested in what you like to do i've known kind of people before who never even looked at advertising things like that but had an interest in something specific and somehow that translated um or was like a transferable skill to getting in into the doors of Wyden and kenny or even other agencies so whatever you guys are doing now whatever you're interested in uh build your craft broadcast yourself make sure you're um becoming the best at your craft what you can do and then when that time comes when it's ready when it's interview season um you ready to go and you got all your stuff and be like hey even though i wasn't a part of a specific internship at this time or even while i was actively pursuing a job this is what i was working on this is what i was doing in my free time so i'd highly recommend that thank you so much for that perspective i really appreciate it and i wonder if yeah. you need, would you follow up on that a little bit there we had some questions from marilyn from clackamas and aiden from grant they're both really interested in design um aiden's case graphic design and marilyn um, visual motion ux ui are there do you have any additional advice for them about some things they could do now um to sort of get their pinky toe in the door yeah was that, sorry was that to katie yeah. or to me yeah, that's okay. to you, right? Yes, yeah, so you. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so anyone can jump in. Um, yeah. If anyone no, can jump in, please. That's a great question. I think what's um interesting to see as kind of agencies adapt to different client needs. Um, we are starting to see that design isn't just design that you see like in the traditional billboards or print. It's you know, it's a lot of in-app development or having. A really good social presence and i think what's important is you when you are kind of young and you still have a lot of time to develop your um, portfolio like to anthony's point i think any project can be turned into a creative project and so i remember when i was in high school transitioning to college and i had a little bit more time and i wasn't worried about like trying to get my foot into an internship my freshman or sophomore year because i was still developing what i liked and what i wanted to create um, I would offer my design services to like friends or family and ask, you know, if you need help with a resume redesign, I'm happy to do that. If you need help creating a logo, I'm help happy to do that. And I think the more you start to gauge that kind of experience early on, the more confident you start to feel about your abilities. Um, and then also you can have an opinion that you start to form about what you like and what you, what design you think is good and what you prefer to, um, share it in front of other people when it comes down to when you're actually applying to an internship and you want to be selective with the type of work you show um, that really well represents you um, and like also to what anthony said i don't think you need to necessarily be in like the advertising world to go into advertising um, a lot of the producers i work with and a lot of the friends i work at widen did not study advertising they came from completely different industries um, I think Crystal mentioned, Katie mentioned, they they came from different worlds and we're now at this place that welcomes that kind of creativity and it doesn't have to be just within an advertising medium. So I think just being hungry and being ambitious and challenging yourself early on um, is really a helpful mindset when you uh, ultimately come down to wanting to apply to agencies and um, looking at client work that you start to like. For sure. One point I was going to add to um, kind of like piggyback Thank off you. So much. That's a really great, um, great way to put it. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, my bad, my bad. Can you guys hear me? Mm -hmm. okay, yeah, go cool. on, Anthony. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I was just going to say um, kind of the, another, I saw another question kind of piggyback was like activities and jobs interns do during the internship. I think one thing, uh, you know, that every department and every team will have their certain, you know, uh, duties and day-to-day -day responsibilities from a brand standpoint, it was doing like client recaps and doing um, internal and external like client recaps after meetings or um, obviously making sure you're working very closely with like a project manager to get calendar holds scheduled, making sure we got rooms booked for client creative meetings and good old dial-ins and making sure all the IT technology doesn't fail in the middle of a meeting, all fun stuff like that. But um, I think one of the also, 
point that like is important to remember to whatever internship or program you're part of, know that especially and one thing that I love about Wyden McKinney is that you could step outside and even learn about other departments and other roles. I know there was times I was running over to the production department and be like, okay, so what is it that you guys do? Because I already, I, I know I tag you in once like everything is, uh, you know, sold in to work and okay, cool, now it's go time, let's produce this bad boy. But kind of what's the other work that you guys are doing behind the scenes? Um, so that's one thing I just recommend, whatever internship and role that you're in, don't be afraid to ask, step outside and learn more. I think that's the beauty of an internship. You're just there, you're there to learn, to gain, you know, the necessary skills that are transferable. But also if there's another department you're interested in, raise your hand and speak up. A lot of the people you'll realize have um, kind of gone from one side into another, or whether it's accounts of production or production to um, media or strategists, whatever so have you. Um, that's the beautiful thing, kind of no matter what your day-to-day -day roles and responsibilities are, there's room to grow and um, availability to learn from other departments. Absolutely. Lucy, are there other questions in the chat that you want to, um, to bring to your colleagues' attention? We have about uh, four or five more minutes, so we'll squeeze in whatever we can. Four or five minutes. Okay, great. Um, I did see one that I thought was interesting because it applies even outside of advertising. And Lewis had asked, what are, if, um, have you ever had a struggle on a project or gotten stuck? And how did you overcome that? And I think that's an interesting question because it applies to so many things, even outside of advertising. So Crystal, have you had gotten stuck before on a project or had to overcome something at work? And like, how did you go about that? Oh my God, like every day. Every day there's a new struggle to work through. Um, I, I think a skill that's super valuable that uh, does develop over time is the ability to look at a challenge in a like 360 degree way. So you look at, you look at something and then you really have to decide what are the 10 other avenues that you could take this and then what are the next couple other ways that you can take this in addition to those 10 that you thought of and really I think using some of that strategic thinking skills it not only helps you um, it not only protects you against from you know being stressed out when a challenge presents itself um, but it also uh, shows that our clients that, um, you know, that you can handle adversity. And I think handling adversity is, is huge because we're constantly being thrown challenges. Um, I, I, there's a challenge I'm working through right now and it's tiny. It's, it's around social Instagram copy. But um, figuring out sort of what are al alternative directions that you can go in um, is super, super helpful. And that skill does develop over time. I think as you, um, you know, experience different projects or different challenges or, um, you know, have an understanding of, you know, if not this, then that. Um, so, I, I mean, I think that this is, a, this is a very sort of conceptual answer, but I'll say on the short end, it's really being able to think strategically and not get yourself stressed out because there is always a way out. There's usually always three or four ways out and you just have to dig uh, and try and find that. That's great advice. Don't get stuck. Don't on get one stuck. Solution. You can't get stuck. Yeah. 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 Um, someone asked an interesting question that I kind of wanted to answer and it was, uh, the idea of like the creative development process. I think someone said, how, oh yeah, David, David, you're asking all the great questions. David's got tons of questions. Go David! I love it. I love it. Um, it was, how do you come up with brainstorm ideas and concepts? Uh, that's probably the funnest part of the job. And I'll say that regardless of what position that you're in, um, trust your own creativity because everyone inputs in some way into the, the final design of an ad, which is really cool. Um, but the way that it works is, I'm going to use Old Spice as an example. So Old Spice comes to the brand managers and the strategist and they say, hey, our deodorant stick sales are down. 
And we really need to increase the sales of deodorant. Not only do they protect you from sweat, but they smell good. Degree protects you from sweat, but they don't smell good. So we need to find a way to create a campaign that not only tells our audience that we have great sweat protection, but that tells them that they can smell good. This is your budget. This is what we want. Go. So then I'm like, okay, I'm writing this down. We ask questions. We go back to strategy and we're like, all right, what, what do we know about our audience? What, what do we think is preventing them from buying Old Spice? What are their underlying needs? What are their um, societal needs? How do they, why do they want to smell good? So Katie, a strategist, will then pull all of these insights together so that you can paint a really good picture of who our audience is. And once we have that really good picture, then we're like, well, wait, what is the tension? What's stopping them? And so what Katie will do, uh, we'll work to find like, what is that tension point? And then when we present it to a creative team, then they have a really rich, what we call a brief. So they're like, ooh, here, there's a tension point that we haven't explored. There's a white space that we haven't explored. So we'll brief a creative team. Sometimes we'll give them thought starters of things that we've seen um, either in social or in gaming, just to kind of start getting their juices flowing. The creative team will take our brief and they will go off and they'll ideate on what could this look like in the real world. And they'll pull inspiration from, it can be from articles that they read, it can be from comic books, it can be literally, it can be looking at a cloud outside. Like they just, they have these ideas. And then what they'll do is they'll create a couple different concepts. They'll then share it with us internally. We will then try and like strengthen the concepts. So from Katie's perspective, she'll say, Ooh, that's something interesting. Let me try and strengthen it with some more consumer insights. I'll say that's interesting, but I know that the client doesn't, you know, doesn't want to go in this direction, or I know that they have an adversity to, I don't know, violence and video games or whatever. So let's make sure that we mold it in this way. So we kind of all work together to help mold the idea. And then when we get a really good idea that we feel good about, then we present it to our client. And then what usually happens is a cycle of our client will get feedback, they'll pick one concept, we'll work it forever, and then, uh, and then it's time to get it approved and go into production. And then that's when Eunice comes in to say, all right, so now we're gonna produce this thing that you guys have created that I've never seen produced before. It seems impossible. Like, what do you mean we're gonna turn a house into a car, but it needs to look practical? So then, yeah, how do you, what do you mean we have to have a river flow through an office with Isaiah on a log? Yeah. How, how, how is this supposed to happen? And we're, we're like, like Eunice, figure it out. I don't know. It's your job. <laughs> Eunice is like, what? So then Eunice will pull all of the resources. She will like not only wreck her brain, but find other people who maybe have done something kind of similar and she'll start to build a team to figure out how to pull that together. Yes. And then when we see the production approach, we're like, oh, so it can be done. <laughs> wow. And then we go into production and then there's rounds of edits. And then once it's done, Fun then stuff. you see the commercial. But it, to go from a concept, typically to go from the concept phase to a finished commercial, it can take anywhere between, you know, three months to 12 months. It really just depends on what the project is. And sometimes we can turn things around quicker if it's, if it's a smaller task. Um, but there's a lot that goes into it and there's a lot of people. And like I said, there's mm -hmm. so many different skill sets that have to come together. And um, that is one of my favorite parts of the job is kind of seeing everyone work their brain in different ways to figure out how to solve a client's challenge. And then when you finally see the ad, it's like, wow, like, you can say like, we did that. And then you tell your parents like, I, I helped make that ad. And it's really cool. It's really rewarding. Yes. That was great, Crystal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was. I think we're probably out of time. Yeah, uh, we, um, I, it's such a great discussion. I love hearing, um, all of the specific examples and just what your work has been like just so over time and especially recently i imagine you're going through um so much change as an industry and it's it's great to get a behind the scenes look there um in a minute i'll ask um 
Lucius will just give like a little final words um, before we head out. Um, but first, I just want to say thank you to everyone at Wyden and Kennedy. You've been so generous with your time and your good advice for the students who are here and the educators who are here. So thank you for that. Um, thank you for the students for being here um, and for continuing to learn. And that really speaks highly of you that um, when everything's turned upside down, you're still looking for opportunities to develop your networks, develop your skills, and get good career mm -hmm. advice. That is really key to finding what you want to do and what your passion is. So kudos to all of you. Um, the last, like, just two little things I will say. We're going to put, Ave is going to put a little um, link in the chat, which is a place where you can get some feedback um, to the volunteers who are here today um, and some feedback about what you liked and maybe what you'd like to see in the future, some different um, topics or things of interest to you, and we will work on those. Um, so please, that's a chance to hear from you. So um, if you have time, two or three minutes after this um, session, um, please do that. Um, we'll have one other creative career talk in um, about a week or so in late May with another agency in town with some other really interesting professionals. So if this area is really your passion, come join us in late May. We'll send you an email about it. So check your inbox. Um, so with that, um, thanks again. And um, any final words, uh, Lucy, Anthony, Crystal, Phoebe? I mean, just like it, I, I think Anthony said it okay. best. If you're a passionate person, if you're if you're hungry, you're on my screen, so you're up. Can you hear? I, can you hear me? I yeah. can hear you, Katie. Yep. Okay, good. I it, I just I feel like following your passion and just and just being yourself. <laughs> oh my God, I sound like a, a, a after school special, but I I do think. <laughs> There's, there's really no one path. I, I, I cannot emphasize that enough. I know I saw like, should, it, should you do grad school? I, like how much schooling do I need? I, I feel like it's very subjective. It's very based on where you want to go, what you want to do. I, I am a firm believer that if I wasn't here doing what I'm doing now, I would be doing something else that would be equally as stimulating somewhere else. I, I, I think that it's just find find your way through and 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 let let your heart lead you um, and and just find your happiness where you can find it. Yeah. Yeah. That is a perfect note to end on. Katie, thank you so much. Thank you.